Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and welcome to my Patreon special content video. Um, thank you so much for being here and being a patron. It really, really means a lot to me. This video is gonna cover solar and I'm gonna try and go through a lot of different points that I get asked all the time. And I'm gonna do it in a way where I was just basically explaining to a friend all these different points. Um, I would probably make a video for all of these different topics, but since you're Patreon, uh, patrons, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lay it all on the line for you here and try and answer as many of these as I can, as simply as I can, to give you a basic understanding of what direction you need to go if you're thinking about solar. So um, let's start with uh, charge controllers because they're important. You need one if you have solar panels. Now, we'll get into the panels and stuff like that in a little bit, but the charge controllers, for the most part, what you're probably going to end up getting your first time is a 30 amp PWM charge controller. It comes with almost all of the solar kits out there. Um, it's the, the basic startup charge controller and they work fine. That's what I have in my RV. Um, we're not going to go into too much about PWM charge controllers versus MPPT controllers because MPPT charge controllers are probably for people that are going to be going with larger solar systems, uh, you know, say 500 watts and up. And um, they really need to get the most out of everything. They're probably full-time RVers and they use hot plates and coffee makers all the time and stuff. That's where those really come in handy. We're gonna focus more on the beginner stuff and uh, PWM is just fine for almost all your needs. Uh, Go Power and Zamp and Renergy, all of their kits are gonna come with a 30 amp PWM charge controller. Now, how much solar can you hook into one of those 30 amp PWM charge controllers, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you. It works out to about 500 watts if you're using uh, 18 volt panels, which most of them are. Um, so, and it's a really, really easy to figure that out. Everybody goes crazy into the math, but at the end of the day, all you do is you take 500 watts and divide it by 18 volts and you get 27.7 amps. And so that's how many amps you're gonna put out and that's uh, the charge controller can handle. It can handle 30, so we're at 27.7, perfect. But that's a really easy way to tell. Um, you can do that with absolutely anything. If you just wanna figure out how many amps you're gonna have with a 100 watt panel, you take 100 and you divide it by 18 and you're gonna get 5.5 amps. It's as easy as that. It's really, really easy to figure that out. So that helps me out a lot when I remember <laughs> to do it like that. But um, so that's a good way to kind of calculate how much solar you can use. But with those 30 amp uh, charge controllers, you can run about 500 watts, which is a really decent amount of solar. I only have a 160 watt panel on my RV and it puts out about 8.8 .8 amps. And uh, that's great. That runs a lot of stuff. And I'll be doing a video soon that shows you exactly how much stuff that will run while it's in direct sun uh, coming up here really soon. But that's a pretty good amount of solar. If you want to get started in it, get the kit with like 100 watts to 200 watts of solar. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised and impressed with how much power that really gives you during the day. Um, I've been loving mine and I've, I've gone on week-long trips, month-long trips, or weekend trips. And when the sun is shining, I, I don't have to worry about power. I can run the radio and a bunch of lights and fans and the water pump and all that good stuff. And at the end of the day, when the sun goes down, I have fully charged batteries. So it's a really good place to start. I would, I would recommend anybody that's looking into going to solar starts at about 200 watts. 160 to 200, you'll be really, really happy with it. Um, another thing, let's see. Uh, let's talk about monocrystalline versus polycrystalline panels. A lot of people ask me this and they want to know what the difference is. I'm going to tell you really, really simply. There are huge forums that talk about tons of details, but basically mono means one. Poly means many. So a monocrystalline just means one crystal. And polycrystalline means many crystals. And the monocrystalline, the single crystal, so mono is a little bit better, and I'll tell you why. It's a little more efficient. How much more efficient? About 10 to 15%. Okay, so that's pretty negligible, really. It's not a huge deal. But mono is a little bit more efficient, and so you're going to get more power with less room. So if you have plenty of space on your RV and you're only putting like 300 watts up there, it really doesn't matter which way you go. Uh, get the wattage that you need and those panels might be a little bit bigger if they're poly or a little smaller if they're mono, 10 to 
Um, if you're trying to get a, a certain amount of power and you have limited space, you're going to want to go with the monocrystalline because they're more efficient, 10 to 15%. So you'll have to use less space to get the same amount of power. But it's not a huge deal. But that's pretty much, that's it. They both work just fine. And so find whatever fits into your budget and the room you have and go for it. They're both great panels. As far as the uh, flexible panels go, they're very cool. They conform to your roof. They have a super tiny profile and uh, there's no wind resistance. You can walk on them, they can bend, they can curve and uh, fit on your room, your roof completely flat. All those things are very, very cool. However, I don't have a lot of experience with them, but all the research that I've been through indicates that they are not gonna last nearly as long as the solid metal constructed uh, mono or poly panels because um, they're so thin, they're not gonna dissipate heat as well, which makes them a little less efficient. And it's also gives them a higher risk of burning out sooner. And so from what I understand, they're very, very cool, but they're not gonna last you as long. So that's, take that however you want. But that's based, the basic difference between poly and mono is simply as I could put it, I, I've, I like both. They both work perfectly. It's just a matter of space and money. Um, okay, uh, doo -doo -doo. talking about the charge controller one more time that I forgot to mention, if you get up to that 30 amps and you wanna add more solar, you don't have to throw away that old charge controller and get a bigger charge controller, an MPPT charge controller. You can actually add a second PWM charge controller and run them in parallel. And they'll change, they'll charge your batteries and they'll both work just fine. So that's a good tip for you. You don't have to totally scrap your old system. If you outgrow it and you want more solar, you can add more panels and just add another charge controller and run them in parallel. So that's very cool. I might do a video on that later, but so you can expand using more charge controllers. And a lot of people don't know that. I run into that all the time. Um, Tilt versus flat mount solar panels. I have to make sure my camera's not gonna stop recording on me again. Okay, I've got a little bit of time. Um, flat mount versus tilt mount solar panels. Um, it really depends on where you live. Uh, mine is flat mounted, so I cannot tilt it. It's just up there on the top of my RV and there it sits. Keep it clean and you're good to go. Don't have to worry about it ever again. Uh, the tilt systems, you can go up onto your roof and tilt all those up at a 30 degree angle and uh, catch a lot more sun, but it's not, necessar it's not necessary depending on where you live and I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna throw up a map here that's gonna show you the areas where you're gonna be fine with a flat mount. And basically, if you were to draw a line across the United States right in the middle, if you're below that line, you're, you're probably fine with a flat mounted solar panel especially if you're in New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Utah, or Nevada, that red in there means you're getting fantastic sun, Texas probably too, all of Texas. And you're good to go with the flat mount all the way up to, I'd say the top of Colorado and even into Wyoming. You're probably okay with the flat. Um, but when you start getting into the Northern states up towards Canada and into Canada, you're gonna definitely want the tilted panels because their winter sun up there is really low on the horizon. It does not go high up into the sky. It's just kind of a low on the horizon kind of a sun. And so having those panels tilted towards that is really going to make them a lot more efficient and effective. They're not going to work very well at all in the winter once you get up into the northern states. And so you'll need that tilt. But um, for me, I'm fine. Most of the time, it's, it's okay. And I don't want to get up onto the roof all the time to mount the panels. And then you got to worry about making sure you remember to put them down because uh, they're going to catch a lot of wind while you're on the freeway. So that's kind of up to you, and it really depends on where you live, on whether or not you need them. Um, but that, that should help you out a little bit as far as knowing whether or not you need to get the tiltable legs and the system like that. Um, another thing that that reminds me of is portable solar panels, kits, or permanently mounted solar. So I also have a 120-watt ZAMP solar folding kit, and uh, I love that thing, it's great. It's, weighed, it's made well and it's 120 watts. And so it gives me about, I think it gives me about seven amps, something like that. But you can pull it out and it usually has a, a charge controller built into the kit. And then hopefully if you're lucky about 20 or 30 feet of cord going to your battery. And so what that enables you to do is kind of take that out and hook it into your RV and then move it anywhere into the sun that you want. And it has that 30 degree angle because it has legs on it. So you can move that with the sun anywhere that you want to and get plenty of power that way. It also helps if you're in the shade. 
if you're in the shade a lot or you're parked in the shade, your solar panels on the top aren't gonna do you any good. And so with this guy, I can actually move it around and point it at the sun and move it anywhere I want and bring in that power that I need. Downsides to the portable panel is it's very large. It's pretty cumbersome, really. I mean, if you think about 260 watt panels folded into a briefcase, you know, it's, it's big. Uh, maybe three and a half feet by three feet or something like that. It's pretty large suitcase that it comes in and it doesn't fit in my closets. It doesn't fit under my table. It doesn't fit in any of my storage bins outside. I'm not gonna put it on the roof because it's an expensive piece of equipment. Uh, I don't wanna get rained on and all the wind and stuff. So I usually have to just put that in my bed. And when I get where I'm going, I pull it out and set it up. But when it comes time to go to bed, I can't have it in my bed. So I have to put it in the front seat and it's just kind of in the way a lot. And so that's kind of the downside to the portable panels, but they do work really well. So it's just kind of a matter of what makes most sense to you. And you can take them with you and use them on your car if you're ever going tent camping and stuff like that. It might help you out quite a bit. Um, so it's really up to you. I have both and I love both, but it's just kind of a matter of uh, whatever your preference is. Let's also briefly uh, touch on batteries for your solar setup here. I'm not gonna go crazy into detail with this, but even if you have a cheap Walmart deep cycle battery, get another one. Get another one exactly like it. Put it next to it if you have the room. You'll be amazed at how much that really helps. Both batteries give you more power because they load share. You're not pulling it all the way out of this one really fast and then it switches to this one, you're pulling it gradually from both and they respond a lot better to that. Lead acid batteries don't like to be drained fast and charged fast, they like things to be slow and gradual. So it doesn't matter if you have a 12 volt uh, cheap deep cycle battery, get one exactly like it and uh, that'll probably be enough for you if you're beginning uh, with solar and all this stuff, that's not a bad setup. If you wanna go a little better than that, I would say six volts, the uh, two six volts in, in uh, series, parallel, stuff like that. Uh, well, I guess they'd be in parallel, they'd be in series. Uh, but if you go to the four, it's series parallel. But two's fine. Start with two six volt batteries in series, and um, they handle it a lot better. Uh, the total discharges or the partial discharges uh, from the tests that I've run, they bounce back a lot better. They're going to last you a lot longer. They're a little more expensive, but they're worth it and they're good stuff. Um, if you're going big, then you're gonna, you're gonna want lithium. In my opinion, I love lithium batteries. They are amazing, they're a game changer, but they're super expensive. Uh, $900 to $1,200 a battery is a lot of dough, but you get so many more cycles out of them, blah, blah, blah. I talk about that in other videos. Lithiums are on a whole different platform. They're amazing, but they're expensive. If you're starting out, don't go with anything less than two batteries if you have the room to put them in. Uh, two 12 volts or two six volts, uh, you're really gonna be impressed with how much that really helps you out. And with solar, the, the name of the game is storing energy. It's all about storing that power when you need it. If it's a cloudy day or something like that, you're not gonna have all that solar coming in and you don't wanna be out of luck with your power. Of course, you could run your generator or other stuff to compensate, but really if you have more batteries than you need, then it's not such a big deal. If it's cloudy one day, you're still gonna have plenty of reserves, then the next day you'll start getting energy again. But I would say the minimum that you should really start with is two 12 volts or two six volts, and uh, it's really gonna go a long way for you. If you just have one battery, um, room for one battery, then make it a nice one. Get an AGM or something like that, and uh, it'll be a little bit better for you. But if you can only have one battery, make sure it's something kind of impressive with a three year warranty, because I'll bet you it won't make it that long if you use your RV a lot, because those those cycles, you're gonna burn through them. And if you have a three year warranty, a lot of times you can you can get in there right before the wire and they'll give you another one. But <laughs> that's, that's kind of my two cents on the batteries is uh, two is definitely uh, where you wanna be, whether it's 12 volts, six volts, or whatever. Lithiums, if you only got room for one battery, get one lithium battery, it's gonna do the work of two or three batteries, in my opinion. Uh, my lithiums are incredible, but I didn't have to pay for them. They sent them to me for a review, so uh, it's gonna be really hard to go back if and when they ever fail, but they're supposed to last for ever. Like 5,000 cycles, something like that. You know, two to 5,000 cycles is a, is a lot of RV and considering I'm not full time, so they should last me forever. But uh, that's my two cents on batteries. Well, that kind of wraps it up for most of the points that I really wanted to cover here. We talked about the 30 amp charge controllers being able to handle about 500 watts of solar. And if you outgrow that, you can add another one, no problem. 
And uh, we talked about monocrystalline versus polycrystalline panels. Mono is better, poly is still pretty darn good. Um, also, you can add another charge controller if you need to, that's great. Tilt versus flat mounted solar panels. You probably don't need it if you're in the lower uh, 48 states there, and uh, you're probably gonna need it if you're getting up north. Um, and then as far as portable versus permanent mount, they're both great. I have both and I use them both all the time. If you can afford that, definitely do that. But if not, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, pick whichever one is gonna fit most of your needs. If you're down in Arizona all the time, flat mounted on the roof is the way I would go. If you're always camping in the trees or in the forests, I would get the portable because you can move it away from your RV to wherever the sun is shining and stay parked in the shade or wherever your spot is. So a lot more flexibility with those. And um, yeah, that about covers it. I, th I hope that's kind of just a general amount of information. I know it was probably a lot and I rambled on, but uh, all these would probably be their own video on YouTube, but I just wanted to lay it on the line and kind of give you guys as much beginning information as I could. If you have any questions, please leave them here on Patreon because I'm gonna to get to you first. And if it's a question that I think a lot of people would benefit from the answer, I'll just make a short video or something for you to respond because I really, really appreciate all of my patrons here on Patreon. Thank you so much, it really helps. This is a full-time job to share all this information with everybody, and I'm really addicted to it. I wanna keep doing it, but it is a full-time job. So thank you so much, and if there's anything I can do for you answering questions or videos that you'd like to see, I will definitely give you first priority here on Patreon, and I think that about wraps it up for my beginning uh, ramble on about solar. So my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club, and until the next time, thanks so much for watching, and happy camping.